Hi, my name is Jerry Hesch, and this presentation is on the piriformis muscle, and we're going to briefly review the anatomy and discuss stretching, discuss relaxation of that muscle, and also discuss strengthening. And so here is from Clemente's book on anatomy, a picture of the piriformis, and you see that here, uh, lying at, a, at an angle of 20 to 30 degrees, coming off of the off of the sacrum here, off the front of the sacrum, and attaching onto the chokan or part of the hip out here. Uh, the sciatic nerve can be visualized coming in front of the piriformis muscle, and for some it will pierce through the piriformis muscle. And uh, the other hip rotators are visualized here, and portions of the gluteus medius, portions of the gluteus maximus are external rotators of the hip, uh, depending on the angle, the piriformis can also be an abductor. And uh, these are the shorter hip rotators, quadratus femoris rotator. And down here is part of the adductor magnus muscle. And so it's important when considering tightness of the piriformis muscle to also consider that some of the other hip rotators can be tight as well. And for that reason, we want to work on stretching multiple muscles, not just to focus on the piriformis itself. Now, the traditional stretch that most folks are familiar with is performed with the person laying down. And we're going to focus on the right. And uh, most people with tight piriformis have that tightness on the right side. There are exceptions. But the traditional stretch involves creating a figure four position with the right lower leg over the opposite thigh and then pushing onto the lower thigh. And this is one that most people are familiar with. Another way of stretching the, the piriformis, which some are familiar with, but I don't think as many people are, and that is to bring the right hip up to 90 degrees. So it's pointing straight up. The thigh is pointing straight up and with the opposite hand you can stretch it over to the left. And you don't want to do a large twisting where it involves the low back. You want to focus on feeling this in the region of the hip and the buttock. And I recommend doing this very very gently and maintaining it for two to five minutes. Um, to capture all of those muscles that have different angulations, you can then drop the leg down a little bit to about 75 degrees and then repeat the same process. Then you can come back up to 90, come a little higher up. One study shows that 110 degrees of flexion is the ideal angle, but you can experiment with these different angles and see which feels most appropriate to you. And I recommend that people who are symptomatic perform this stretch once or twice a day and do that for a couple of weeks and then do it at least twice a week thereafter to maintain the gains. And I'll show you a different uh, method and that is to use direct pressure on a piece of foam. This is a 2 inch by 4 inch by 8 inch long foam and uh, it indents a little bit and then it conforms to the body, to the shape of the body, so it can be very, very comfortable. And what I do is I place this, the middle of this foam, right outside my front pocket. So I lift up my pelvis, place it underneath there, and let the leg straighten out. And it's not too far in. I can feel it when I roll my hand across the outside of my of my hip and pelvis. And so you place it right in the middle of the pocket and extend that leg. The other leg can be bent for comfort and uh, I just have people lie like this for five minutes. And um, before I have them do this, I actually test internal rotation of this leg with the person in this position laying on their back. 
So I'm testing internal rotation with the hip in a neutral position and the knee extended. And you will find a lot more tightness with this test procedure than you will when you test somebody laying on their stomach, bending the knee at 90, and testing uh, rotation this way. So I highly recommend that you test, test it with the person laying down. It's okay to test in the other position. There is some good research that supports it, but it's a very different context. And so if you're gonna test the prone knee flexion technique, I, I certainly advocate doing it this way as well. And I hope that's clear. And of course you compare it to the other side. Now you can take that piece of foam and put it a little bit lower in the thigh and you'll capture a little bit more of the hamstring muscles and a little bit more of the posterior part of the adductor magnus muscle. Okay? So now we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about ways to relax the piriformis. There are cases when you may have considerable inflammation and all of these are somewhat uncomfortable and if stretching is simply not tolerated that be a good that might be a good indication that what you need is actually relaxation and so what you do then is you actually allow the muscle to passively shorten and you stack several pillows And so I'm going to flex my knee up to 90 degrees and I let the leg fall outward and rest against pillows. And I don't know how many you need, it's all individual, but you want to seek a position of maximal comfort. And so I can drop it down to about 75 degrees and that feels even more comfortable, okay? You can come back up to 90 and test that position maybe an additional pillow would help and you can test bringing it up a little bit higher up and uh, for my anatomy that does not seem as relaxing as it does down at 90 and down at 75 degrees and so you can do that for two minutes up to five minutes and you may use that in several positions and you can do that once or twice a day um, and I would do it for as long as it seems irritable and uh, that can be part of your rehab program it can be part of the treatment and um, some folks like to use a tennis ball and uh, lay on that and I think that a tennis ball is very appropriate um, if a person is real muscular then you might use a rubber ball that has greater density um, you can typically find a rubber ball at the grocery store or uh, local toy store and a tennis ball and you could lay on your back and just roll your body around that ball and capture the whole region of that piriformis muscle as well as the other rotators that we showed you. And I want to keep this video pretty brief. I want to talk about strengthening and gross movement is what our bodies crave and need and if someone has a chronic type piriformis um, you may have inhibition of the mus of the opposite muscles that internally rotate the um, the hip so we're focusing on my right side and I'm going to grab some weights and some TheraBand if you would hand those to me please So if I want to focus on strengthening the muscles that internally rotate the hip and I want to strengthen them along with my trunk, then if I use light weights in my hands and I twist to the right, the trunk goes to the right, but because the foot is planted, then the hip goes internally. So by doing right trunk rotation, I'm emphasizing strengthening of the internal rotators, okay? And coming out of that is eccentric strengthening of the 
of the piriformis. But I favor gentle movement in both directions and it might be that you have one direction uh, that's a little bit tight. Uh, I, I recommend doing this exercise slowly, gently, with a reasonable amount of weight, something that you can comfortably do this exercise ten times and uh, many of my clients tolerate motion in both directions. And of course the other thing that you could do is use some resistive tubing, which um, this is a short strap um, that you could attach to a door handle and, uh, and use that for resistance. So I wanted to keep this video fairly brief and just give some general pointers for piriformis, but of course it's ultimately up to you and your healthcare provider in terms of your diagnosis and please consult your healthcare provider before taking on exercises to treat that. You want to make sure there aren't um, other issues going on that require medical attention. So uh, do communicate with your healthcare provider and I hope that these are helpful to you. Thank you very much.